In the name of the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The word of God for our consideration is from our second lesson from James chapter 2. My dear brother and sister in the Lord, Julie Andrews once sang a famous song that went like this. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens, bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages tied up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. Hey, all right, you actually know it. I know some of the kids, they're probably wondering, what's that? Who's Julie Andrews? Anyways, she was a great singer. And this was part of a wonderful musical, and this song is all about favorite things, right? You ever wonder why she never sang about the thorns on roses or the fleas on kittens? That just doesn't seem right, right? Who would have such things as their favorite things? No, in fact, she sang about what she did because what she thought about that brings her happiness were all of these pleasant, wonderful things. It's not wrong for us to have favorite things. It's not wrong for us to have a favorite restaurant or a favorite sports team or a favorite activity, or, or even a favorite friend. None of these things are what is being spoken about in our lesson for today. I mean, it's not wrong if all of a sudden you just have something with another individual that you just click, and so you're friends. It's not wrong if you have, you know, this hankering for some really good food and so you know exactly where you want to go. It's not wrong for you to have that destination of peace and tranquility that you just want to escape to. These are all wonderful things because you like them and they bring you happiness. But the huge difference that we need to decipher is between what you like and what you love. Because when you like something, you are looking to get something. You know, if you like a sports team, you want them to entertain you. If you like a restaurant, you want their food. If you like a destination, you want relaxation. You're always looking to get something. But love is not about what you get. Love is about what you give without wondering or thinking what you're going to get in return. And so as we look at favoritism today, and we look at all the things that James speaks to us in our lesson, we realize that this is a distinguishing mark between liking things and loving things, where your heart is versus just what brings you happiness. And we'll realize that when it comes to favoritism, there are plenty of pitfalls. Namely, because we as human beings, we look at the exterior, whereas God, in his infinite wisdom and power, he looks within. As we look at the pitfalls, we can see in the example from our lesson, there are two men who are entering the meeting. And all of a sudden, one, he is dressed in high garb. He's got gold. He looks like he is a highfalutin, important individual. And you can see the reaction of most people in this example. All of a sudden, when you see that, you know, high-class individual come in, they say, well, you've got a spot right here. Hey, uh, let me fix that up for you. I'll do whatever I need to because you are entranced by the glory of the riches that this man may have. Or, or even worse, you're looking at it from the perspective of what you can get out of him. All of a sudden, when we look at what we do as human beings, we turn individuals into the tools of how, how they can serve us, what they can do for us, and what I can get out of. But then you see the other man. The other man who is dressed in shabby clothes and 
Yeah, I guess we got room for you here, too. Why don't you go stand in the corner? You know, stand over there somewhere, just, just not here, because maybe you smell, or maybe you're shabby, or maybe one thing or another. We're looking at individuals from what you can get out of them. You can see why certain people are treated the way they are. And we're used to it. Why? It's all around us, isn't it? I mean, you look at how individuals always use us. I mean, think of politics, right? You hear a politician, and what do they tell you? They tell you just about anything under the sun. They promise you just about everything under the sun, just so they can use you, get what they want out of you. They use us as tools. Or think about big businesses and how they advertise. They always say how they want you to be happy. They want to serve you in whatever way possible. But in the end, what is it always about? About what they can get out of you. How much money they can get you to spend. We are so used to it that this mentality actually finds its way into how we sadly treat others. It's very easy for us to fall into the favoritism mindset because we look at the exterior of individuals and it's so normal and so commonplace for us to treat others in the same way as we have been treated. It's so easy for us to look at the exterior of someone and make judgments for it and lose sight of the fact that God does not do any of these things. It's so easy for us to fall into these pitfalls because of who we are. We are so blind to the very fact that favoritism is something that we struggle with all the time. And sadly, as we look at this portion of God's Word, it's not written to the politician or to the big business advertiser. It's written to a church. It's written to people like you and me. This, this portion of God's Word is, is not geared towards those who abuse it the most, like a politician, but to people like you and me. And immediately when you think, well, favoritism, I mean, is this really a big deal, Pastor? You know, why is this sin even talked about today? I mean, that just doesn't seem like a big issue. Well, the people in our lesson thought the same thing. They looked at the bigger sins, like committing adultery or do not murder. I mean, these are the big sins, right? We shouldn't be doing those things. Because those are just catastrophic things. Destroy marriages. Send somebody to prison for life or to the electric chair. You know, those are the big deals. And yet, when we look at the relationships that we have within this life, favoritism penetrates as well as dictates how we treat others and how we use others until we're done with them. And that's what James brings to light is, what are you and I doing in this church body? Are we using each other? Are we just using each other until we're of no use and then we're moving on to someone who can be used even more? Because ultimately, all we're doing is serving ourselves. You look at how favoritism works, it's all about what I get out of it. How you can do something for me. How is this going to help me? All the thumbs are pointing back to this guy. God hates it. God absolutely despises it. Because he, he looks at us and he tells us that we are going against the golden rule, the royal law. Love your neighbor as yourself. This is what we're supposed to do. 
to love our neighbor, not to thinking about our neighbor, about how we can get something out of them, how we can milk something out of them, how they can serve us as a tool in our life. No, that is selfish thinking motivated by favoritism. So certainly, look at how James starts this. My brothers, as believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, don't show favoritism. What a world this would be if we didn't show favoritism, if we weren't just looking about what someone can get, but instead looking for opportunities for someone to give. And then all of a sudden we realize that the pitfalls that we have, the pitfalls of favoritism, the, the measuring mark that God has set for us to love our neighbor as ourselves, this is a tall order, something that we really are incapable of doing. We are just completely dumbfounded with the ability to do this, and yet that's exactly why Jesus Christ came into this world. Jesus is the servant of all mankind, never looked to do anything to get something from us. He never treated us as the tools as we treat each other. And we know that specifically, that when you look at John 3.16, what does it say? It doesn't say that Jesus liked the world. No, Jesus loved the world. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. The love of God is the love that we are to emulate with each other. It's, a, it's not a love of favoritism. It's not how we look at the exterior, but instead we view each other as souls of Christ. That each and every one of us, we have a need and that need is to know Christ Jesus our Lord. And if we're only going to look at each other as a tool, we're going to far miss that chance to love. The Lord Jesus, he didn't look at you and I as tools. He looked at you and I as souls to be saved. When you and I were baptized in the water, washed away our sins, he looked to you and I as souls to keep within his family, to nurture and to love. The Lord Jesus never looked at us and said, nope, not you, not rich enough, nope, not you, too poor, nope, not you, too stinky, nope, not you, too short. No. The Lord never played favorites. And thank God, because I don't think there's a single person in this room that could qualify as a favorite. There's not a single person here that would meet any mark that the Lord sets for us to get to. Instead, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That he poured out his love for us, that he shows us what it means to love. There are extreme pitfalls when it comes to favoritism. And yes, this is something that we each struggle with every single day. It's not about what we like, it's about how we can love. And Jesus shows us that. So what do we do? We go from this place, not looking at each other about how we can get something out of each other, but we serve one another. We mimic the actions of our Lord Jesus as we serve. And we go thinking and seeing the cross of Jesus on the heads of individuals. Because with our eyes focused on the cross and the life hereafter, we are then beginning to think and see as Jesus does. Not the exterior of a man, but the interior. May God help us because this is hard. May God help us because this is a challenge. May God help us because it goes against every fiber of our being. But this is how Christ loved us. So let us go love one another and treat each other in the same way. Amen. Please stand.